As we head into this three day Memorial Day weekend filled with time at the beach, barbecues and parties, it's important to pause and reflect on the ultimate sacrifice of so many men and women who died for our country. One way we can honor their sacrifice is by looking at the history of this nation. Christopher Kelly has a passion for military history. He's written a new book called America Invades, how we've invaded or been military involved with almost every country on earth. Welcome, Christopher. How you doing? Uh, great. Good to be with you, Rick. Nice to be with you. Doing research on you and your book, you said writing America Invades made you feel different about what it means to be American. Talk about that a little bit. Sure. Uh, well, I have a co-author. His name is Stuart Laycock, and he wrote a book called All the Countries We've Invaded. And he talked about how Britain has invaded 90% of all the countries in the world. I read that book and I reviewed it, and I sent him the review. We became friends. And when we met, I said, I said that as an American, I was interested to see how, how America would compare to Britain in that category. Uh, how many countries have we been involved with? And so we went through every country in the world, from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, and talked about American military involvement in almost every country on Earth. You know, Christopher, we like to think that we honor our veterans, remember those who died in combat, but can we, should we do more? What do you think about this weekend, for example? What can we do? I think it's very important that we remember uh, the sacrifices that were made that you alluded to earlier. Uh, I think the, uh, there's no doubt that here we are, 70 years after VE Day, just a few days ago, uh, coming up on the 70th anniversary of VJ Day, the end of World War II, the, the most horrendous war in human history, uh, in which uh, the Americans played a, a vital role. And there's no doubt that the world would be a... Uh, a darker place uh, had it not been for our involvement and for uh, for the uh, victory of the Allies in that war. You know, the book is great because it does bring history to life. What did you learn through the writing process? There were a lot of things that I picked up in the course of researching the book. Uh, and the very first American invasion, uh, we had we, all the way back to 1741. Uh, which, and of course, you say, well, that's even before America was a country. The United States was a country. But there were Americans living in the colonies, and there was a war going on, the War of Jenkins' Ear, uh, between the British and the Spanish. And an admiral by the name of Admiral Vernon led an expedition to what is today Colombia and assaulted Cartagena. And one of the 3,500 Americans that participated was Lawrence Washington, the older half-brother of George. And uh, while the expedition was not successful, Lawrence spoke highly enough about his uh, commander to his brother that he ended up naming his home Mount Vernon in honor of the leader of that first American invasion. Yeah, Christopher, we're showing some shots right there from Mount Vernon. Uh, obviously one of the great American tourist destinations. If you have a chance, check that out as well with the family. But uh, one of the uh, elements of the book I thought was kind of fascinating was, and explain this, American polar bears from Michigan, and I didn't know this part of history, invaded Russia? That's right. Uh, in 1918 and 19, uh, President Wilson authorized the deployment of American troops to Russia uh, in the northern part of Russia uh, and also to Vladivostok in Siberia as well. They actually came in two different parts of Russia. But the ones that are most well known are the polar bears. Uh, and most of those guys were from Michigan. They had trained at Fort Custer in Kalamazoo. And there's a memorial to them in Troy, Michigan. I'm sure some of the, uh, I've met some of the descendants of the, the polar bear expedition. Uh, and uh, they'll be gathering at Memorial Day this weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, one of the more interesting stories from the book, obviously it chronicles the trials, tribulations, and tragedies. But also there's kind of some oddball elements to the book as well. You talk about a Swedish-American connection in World War II and how we really developed our love for pizza in this nation. It is kind of a surprising story, but I'm, my hometown is Sacramento, California, and Sacramento is home to Shaky Johnson, who is a Swedish American who, uh, after Pearl Harbor, he joined the U.S. Navy. He served in the Mediterranean, called on Italian ports, and he learned about pizza, and he appreciated pizza, and he brought that back with him to Sacramento, and he founded uh, Shaky's uh, uh, restaurant chain, which was the first family-style pizza chain in the United States. It doesn't sadly exist anymore, but it's been, of course, imitated many times over. Uh, and so there's a, a connection between our love of pizza and World War II. 
Yeah, the greatest generation. Obviously, we're losing so many of them every single year. Uh, Christopher, as we head into this Memorial Day, I'm going to leave you with a final thought. What are some of your thoughts as you examine the service of so many Americans who died fighting for our freedoms? Uh, I think it's it's great to, to keep it bear in mind the sacrifice that was made on behalf of uh, of our freedom, not only the freedom of Americans, but the freedom of of people all over the world. Uh, that uh, that and and for which you know we we need to be grateful. I, I believe. All right, well said, Christopher Kelly. We really appreciated the book American Vates: How We've Invaded or Been Military Involved with Almost Every Country on Earth. Thank you again, Christopher. So much detailed in there about the sacrifice and service of so many Americans who made our nation great. And this Memorial Day, once again, take pause and remember that service as you enjoy time with family and friends. Christopher Kelly from London, England. We're coming right back on The Hard Line.